So we will stay. Today, Saints, Kenzie Rachel, the Mormon Entertainer, here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of us here today. It's Tom and Jerry Sins Day once again, and we're on to the next episode Suffering Cats. Now, as usual, same sinning rules apply, and anything and everything is fair game. So, here we go. <laughs> Slight variation on the uh, iconic theme that we know, but at least we have the iconic theme, which is the main thing. Right. I assume it's Tom pulling the string, but with the with the string being pulled with that much force for Jerry to be able to do that, the string should have snapped. <laughs> And apart from that, given how t given how close it is to the end of his tail, A, Jerry shouldn't be stretching like that, and B, that string would have come off long before now. Wow. Tom pretending he's fishing. You're kind of in the wrong place to do so, Tom. Since when did Jerry decide to become a car? That would result in a pretty severe headache. So with that. Okay, so... He whacks the back of his head off the first one. And yet he misses the second one okay. Hmm. Unless he looked behind him? I don't see how that would work. Really, Tom? That's the best you can do? That would have definitely snapped. Right. Jerry wasn't even anywhere near that place first time around. Um, I would take a sin off for how creative that is, but, um, no, because there's no way Jerry would have been able to, A, I'll say, there's no way, I'm putting this into three parts here, there's no way Jerry would have been able to, A, untie himself from the fishing rod, B, rip, uh, rip to the specific part off to send to Tom, and C, tie said part to the fishing line so that he can actually get it sent to Tom in that short space of time. There's no way any of those three things would have happened in the space of like 10 seconds. And apart from that, and anyway, while we're on the side, how did Jerry get onto the worktop and get out of the window? There's no way that gap would be big enough for him to jump across. And thus demonstrating the value of watching where you're going. Okay, when you know Tom is that way anyway. Do you know what I mean? The logical thing to do at this point would have been to run to his left, not his right. No. The cat would have eaten him long before now. I'm the biggest cat. No, I'm the biggest cat cliche. But I'll take a sit up because that is hilarious. So, net zero, move on. Unrealistic physics! Just eat them already if you're gonna do so! Just before we get into this next part, does Pepper actually make you sneeze? 
Turns out it does. Minus one sin for the team doing their research once again. <laughs> Long build up to a big sneeze cliche. <laughs> Using a baguette as a telescope? How exactly is that gonna work when it's not gonna make much difference as to how close things look? Why is he going in the exact same directions knowing there is a cat in both directions? Stabbing mouse. No. Unless the baguette was stale, it wouldn't cause that much damage because there's no way it would go from fresh to stale just like that. Oh boy. Clearly, Tom's gonna win this contest because. He has six whiskers, and his rival has four. Oh well, worth a shot. Clearly, that cat would have felt A, Tom escape, and B, the plant pot being put in his place. Where was Tom hiding the whole time? Also, how did he A hide and B manage to escape with Jerry? No. The cat would not turn into a pancake, it would just result in a broken nose. Worst case scenario. But turning into an ironing board? Gotta take the sin back off. Clearly he's not gonna fall for that! You should have known Jerry was going to pull that one off. Also, how did Jerry source that thing anyway? It was nowhere near us in the previous shot. Oh, he would have felt Tom tying the tail to the hose. That would result in either broken bones or a very sore back. Not the hose being like that. Or the hose getting dislodged for that matter. Unless somebody was baking in between all these shots, there's no way the pie should be there. Running into a trap that's around the corner because you're not looking because you're running too fast, cliche. Goodness sake, two in a row, seriously. That's definitely a concussion and a trip to the hospital. Why are you tossing Jerry when he's not on a cooker? Tom would not be able to fit his big head inside a small hole. The pipe hitting off a head is not supposed to sound like a gunshot being fired. It is supposed to sound metallic! Clearly Tom's going to enjoy what happens next. Tom covers his ears and yet he's still able to hear the sound of the pipe, which is meant to sound metallic, not like a gunshot, hitting off his rival cat's head. Even the cat's not meant to sound metallic! Jerry using disguise to fool cats cliche. They're looking at each other being very puzzled. Could you not tell that was Jerry in a disguise? How stupid are these cats? Well, clearly he's not gonna be there anymore, is he? Tom and his rival would have felt this at this point. More unrealistic physics. A the tree wouldn't stretch like that, and B, the cats wouldn't stretch like that, and C, that is um, not very subtle, is it, folks? Guys, there are thumbtacks right in front of your face as you are running. Can you not tell that is going to end badly?
any of the tanks touched them and even if they did that would result in uh four bleeding paws in this case i would say feet but they're cats and cats have paws not feet but my point still stands that would result in four bleeding paws and a trip to the vet i should have said vet to begin with because animals go to vets not hospitals but i guess hospital still counts because Vets are technically hospitals for animals. Well, oh, I'm I'm a I'm a very unorthodox thinker. I'm always thinking outside the box, folks. Judge me if you want. I'm not concerned. That's just my way of thinking. And they wouldn't be able to run like that if they had bleeding paws. Mm, no. Stop fighting over the mouse and split it among you if that's what you really want. Advice heeded. Sin retracted. If you're gonna split the uh, mouse between you, why not, why not go this way instead of that way? How did his whiskers grow back so quickly? Make a big deal about this axe. You're acting like it's a guillotine blade. No, 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 and no. That should result in Jerry being dead, meaning game over. Also, Tom would not be able to spot fast enough where exactly to hit Jerry on the line. Tom, you're not playing golf. Wait a minute, stupid! You don't have to share that mouse with that guy! I'm somehow mistaking this devil cat from devil mouse because he looks more like a mouse than he does a cat! X marks the spot. His head is not a treasure map, so clearly X doesn't mark the spot in this case. Unnecessarily dramatic screeching breaks. Also, why would Tom stop there? If he's gonna destroy the cats, then destroy him! Don't stop at the last second! Why would you be out of breath from just one axe swing? You are a disgrace to the tree cutting industry. I'm disgusted with you. You, you. you lost your knife. This devil cat would be excellent at Tom and Jerry's sins. Now listen here. You're a citizen, ain't you? Um, technically he's not because he's a cat. You've got rights. How does he know that J Tom has rights? Tom is a cat, not a human being, and therefore isn't a citizen. That mouse was yours first. You had priorities on him. He does have a very valid point there. But it took us pretty much the entire length of this episode to establish that Tom had the mouse first. Plant that axe in his toupee and you have that little cheese napper all to yourself. Even the devil cat does not understand that mice do not like cheese. Go on, swing it. I'd rather swing that thing at you first because you do not understand that mice do not like cheese. Um, Tom should have felt that getting a lot lighter at that point. And apart from that, why did it come off now instead of earlier? Because unless the glue isn't very effective, which it clearly is in this case, it should not have come off and therefore the blade should still be on. Every hitting sound effect sounds like a gunshot. If you are going to do a hitting sound effect, use something else that is not a gunshot! Unnecessarily large lump in the head to signal headache after significantly large hit cliche. It would have hurt after the first touch, not the second. 
Six hits to Tom. Gee whiz, that's a bit of an overkill. You two make your blasted mind up. Are you working together or are you not? Two things wrong with this. One, Jerry would not have got under that gate. And two, the gate, unless it's made of very brittle wood, which in this case it looks like it, but it shouldn't be, because all gates aren't supposed to be that weak, their heads would not have ploughed through the gates, they would have gone headfirst into the gates, and that would have resulted in them both taking a trip to the vet. And another thing, where on earth is Tom's rival's cat's headache? <laughs> Where did Jerry source that piece of wood? That sign wasn't there in the previous shot! Also not very subtle innuendo. Maybe something I should have pointed out earlier is the fact that his hair should be stuck to his head, otherwise his scalp would have come off and that would have resulted in another trip to the vet. Gee whiz, how many trips to the vet do these cats need? <laughs> well, who'd have thought I'd be sinning the end title card? Uh, an MGM Tom and Jerry cartoon. Where was it made? It's normally at the bottom. Where was it made? Ah, oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Another fun night of editing on the cards. Goody! Alright, so that's it for this week's episode of Tom and Jerry Sins. Uh, next week it will be the Bowling Alley Cats. Uh, I'll, I'll be a busy bee over the next few days doing some recording because next weekend I'm going to be in Bristol for another uh, YSA convention. So... Uh, the latest I'll be able to do my podcast will be, um, the latest I'll be able to do it, uh, will be Thursday before I head down, before I head down on Friday, which means I'll need to get, uh, and by the time I get back up, which will probably be, uh, on a Tuesday, I think, Tuesday or Monday night. Uh, I'll need to get a music cover up for next Monday as well. So anyway, anyway, I'll, I'll sort that out when the time comes. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. If you guys enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Latter Day Scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, part two of yesterday's podcast on the left. Tom and Jerry Sins on the right. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Have a fantastic day. Peace out and stay faithful. You took one swing, and you are out of breath, Tom. One swing! You are a disgrace to the axe industry. Or whatever industry the axe uses. They make a big deal about this axe feeling like it's... Nope. Advice heeded, Simon. He covers his ears, and yet he reacts as if he heard the shot. Tom would not be able to fit his head into that. Try again. Paul would not be able to fit his head into that giant hole. And by giant I'm being... The top. Walking into a trap that's just round the corner when not looking and just... Dang it. Walking into a trap. No. Right. No. Clearly this cat would have actually felt Tom A escape and P put the plug on. Clearly, nope. Clearly that cat would have felt A, Tom escape, and B, put the plug pot in its place.